continuing uh, cake morning express at just uh, quarter past eight <laughs> you know and and uh, i've been you know i was looking at the ktn twitter handle here right. and see if the questions already are coming through for dna testing you know people mm -hmm. who want to find out if uh, the real dads out there you know they're making money and they're still poor and suffering poverty my question is uh, if you suspect you know that uh this say I'm, I'm a son you know and there's this very successful father or something or mother somewhere you know what am i chances and you know to, to find him without him knowing you know that i can actually do a dna test is that possible is that even possible what do i need to make it that possible theoretically it's possible the answer to your question that is but legally it might not be uh, easy and right so i mean i think what you're asking is in what situations do people have dna testing and mm -hmm. i mean they are they are varied the most common and the most usual reason in kenya in particular is when it's for legal reasons so in family courts, uh, there's a man who denies parental responsibility and the court wants to establish biological fatherhood. That's why it's called paternity. Mm -hmm. So the court will order and request that uh, the test be done. So in that case, then there's no much choice. They might argue, but ultimately they'll end up coming for the test. But there are situations where people want to know for social reasons, to remove doubt, for peace of mind. <laughs> so in those kind of situations, uh, the man, woman, and can come with a child and have the test done. Mm -hmm. But in a situation where your time say, you want to establish whether somebody is your dad. Yes. I mean, probably it will be because you want inheritance from him or you want at least an acknowledgement. And in those cases, then you actually have the right, particularly if you're more than 14 years old, you can go to court and uh, seek. But the easier way of doing it is to ask your mom and tell your mom, can we go and have this guy tested uh, with me? And uh, you negotiate and you come and we test you. Now, that is not really legal. That is more of social. social it's allowed. For, for but if you try to circumvent, it's yeah. not possible mm -hmm. because you're not allowed to take somebody else's sample and do any testing on it without their consent. Mm -hmm. So that would be illegal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, just my final question uh, before I let this go. Yes. You know, some two years ago, so, or sort of, you know, there was a report that was done, you know, and, and uh, I remember this because, you know, I was yeah, re doing, it was a big news then, you know, and, you know, about a week or so, you know, we went over and over it, you know, that most men are living with children who are not their children in this country today. Isn't that true? I'm, no, no, I don't not know. No, I'm asking the, I'm posing the question to them. I don't know. I remember that article. Actually, well, it came yes. out uh, from a story uh, which was about some DNA testing yes. done between what we had been doing and the government chemist. Yes. And uh, I think it misrepresented the facts. Uh, the issue was that uh, there was a bit of doubt about some of the results. However, it's not, to, it's not true at all to say that most cases of DNA testing end up being negative on on the man's side so <laughs> factually it's not true i think majority of people are actually living with their own biological children uh, but in the african culture your child is your child it doesn't have to be biological so that's another story <laughs> okay all right that's it. well uh i hope you all your questions i'm satisfied <laughs> no I i'm don't. sure there's a whole lot more that you want to know here <laughs> well our sms lines are open and in case you want to get in touch you can use the SMS line 22155 or you can tweet us Morning Express KTN, that's the hashtag or at KTN Kenya, at Joy Doreen Bira or at James Smart and uh, we'll be able to get those out for you. So in case you have any questions uh, feel free to ask anything about DNA tests. We have the guests in studio here. So we have Dr. Ahmed Kalebi who is a pathologist and group managing director for Pathologists Lancet Kenya and we also have Eunice Ombat who is a lab scientist and also the country manager for pathologists Lancet. Did I get that right? Welcome all to the show. Thank it's you. good to have you especially on this interesting uh, topic uh, knowing that it falls in the DNA or health bit of uh, a lot of Kenyans and they have so many mixed reactions towards a topic like this. Um, I'll start with Dr. Ahmed. What is a DNA test in the first place? So basically, a uh, DNA test, uh, what it is, is that uh, you might hear terms like genetic fingerprinting, parental mm -hmm. testing. It is a molecular test where we are looking at the DNA of an individual to determine whether that individual is related to uh, another person. In most cases, we do it for paternity testing. And it's a very simple test, if I put it that way. Uh, you can look at it from the perspective that if you take, for example, this, uh, this material here. Yes. And... Uh, this other material here, if you don't mind, Eunice. So we have two different colors, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what you're looking at is when you have a child born, 
they get their genetic material in equal measure, half half from the father and yeah. the mother. And it becomes a mix. That's mm -hmm. why you see we talk of pointees. Pointees are mixed. <laughs> so if you put, put this together, this looks golden, then it will be a bit of shades of each. Yes. Now, if you want to know the ultimate product, is it coming from the two? What you're trying to look at is particular sections of this fabric and the color to see whether there's a mix. And that mix where it can be coming from the origin. So what happens in the DNA testing? Most people know about the DNA, you know, the, the famous double helix, more mm -hmm. looks like a zipper. Mm -hmm. So it has very small components, what we call sh short tandem repeats. And in each of those components, what we call genes, yeah? The genes, right. they get mixed. And what you're really looking at is you cut a piece of the fabric from the child, cut a piece of the fabric from the father, and you try to see, is this fabric coming from the father or from another man? Yes. Now, by looking at it literally under the microscope, looking at the DNA fingerprints, you're able to say this material came originally from this other material. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, that is uh, clearly explained. But then now, when we look at the different types of, of DNA, uh, some people think that maybe DNA tests should only be done when someone is trying to find out who their father is. Are there various types of DNA tests that we need to look into? Uh, Yunus? Um, DNA testing... Um, as expressed is that you know we do it to determine if the the father is actually the father of the biological father of that child mm -hmm. and also we do it for social reasons um, whereby you know um, a man and uh, a wife they think that ah, I'm not so sure if this is really my child and it's not a court case they're just coming to to set through their own you know doubts, doubts. Mm. and when this comes to our laboratory we are able to to test mm -hmm. but the two of them must be there that is the father the the mother and the child of course there are actually other situations yes uh, where you have to do dna testing as uh Eunice alluded to one of them is paternity mm. but there's also something called maternity testing yes. a lot of the time which maternity, is the maternity because the popular one is the paternity, the paternity. so yes. paternity you're trying to determine fatherhood that yes. uh, is this particular child the biological child to a particular man so that is paternity mm -hmm. but there are situations where you want to do maternity testing to determine is somebody biologically related to a woman is that the mother mm -hmm. most of the time you know they say maternity is a fact yeah paternity is always a doubt mm -hmm. uh, in most uh, social contexts because most of the time the woman will know that this is my child but you get situations where you can have mix-up in hospitals mm -hmm. it does happen mm -hmm. and then later you want to find somebody this is my child or for example like say someone wants to immigrate to another country australia canada us for example mm -hmm. and they say this is my child but they want to prove so they want to prove maternity so you can do dna testing basically you're looking at the dna of the child and the woman to determine are they related so that's maternity testing mm -hmm. but you can also use dna testing for other reasons to establish kinship mm -hmm. for example uh, you have a long lost cousin of yours yes. uh, who comes and says they claim inheritance to a particular uncle mm -hmm. and you're like i don't think you're related to my uncle <laughs> so the uncle is maybe dead so you want to determine is he really your cousin you can actually do that test is somebody really your brother in your abs in the absence of your parents you can actually do what you call kinship to determine whether people are related and uh, for all this this uh, situation by trying to, do, to determine the relationship between different people however we can also do dna testing simply for forensic reasons yes. for legal reasons in mm -hmm. others police cases so mm -hmm. somebody i mean i remember the other day we had a case in one of the ngos uh, internationals where somebody uh, was accused of having um, uh, masturbated in a particular uh, in a particular room. Yes. So there was <laughs> semen in the carpet. So they wanted to find out who who ah, semen it so, was. Oh, so, so a <laughs> DNA test was so, done to find so, out so who it was. So exactly. we actually could take that material, test all the men in the in their particular building, mm -hmm. and then find out that this comes from a particular person. There are situations, for example, of rape. Mm -hmm. You want to know, determine is somebody uh, the one who raped somebody else mm -hmm. uh, by picking their cells, etc. So in those kind of situations, they're trying to determine the. Uh, biological material is it from a particular biological a source a particular person so mm -hmm. that is for forensic purposes yeah right. so lastly there are situations where people just do their dna profile you know you can just come and say i want to find out my dna profile mm -hmm. because maybe who knows uh, particularly for soldiers like for example we do that a lot for the for some of the high risk uh, army uh, uh, personnel mm -hmm. uh, because uh, in cases of uh, fire or uh, bombs 
uh, you might not have a situation whereby you can actually be able to identify that person other than the DNA. So you require the original DNA. So we do a DNA profile and we're able to identify that person posthumously. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, you know, the, I'm, I'm sure you've done so many tests and, and may, probably most of them have been around paternity and people trying to find out where exactly is this my child, is this not my child. And, uh, you know, someone, is there a percentage, are there any studies, any statistics that indicate that, look, uh, I think the numbers have gone from this much to this much or have come from this much to this much? Uh, do we have any statistics, Yanis? Um, actually, recently, the paternity testing has gone very high. Mm -hmm. We've found many um, cases coming from the courts and um, it's legal patrols and people are asking, is this really my child? And they want to, this to be confirmed. Um, as Dr. Kalebi said, it's about inheritance and also that surety that the child I'm taking care of is actually my child. Mm. So it's going up? Yeah. It's really going, going up pretty up. fast. Yeah. And um, the, the other question that, you know, comes to one's mind from the very first time we look at it, because I, I think in Kenya, just like in any other African country, when someone is told about a DNA test, you know, the first thing is like, come on, what kind of, what, what level of disrespect is this? You know, and, and how much does it cost to do a DNA test? anywhere so in two Kenya. issues mm -hmm. two issues you've raised about the cost yes which i'll come to later but i mean the whole purpose of uh, is it really something we should do do people really accept dna mm -hmm. i'll tell you surprisingly uh, a lot of people a lot of people will think men will refuse <coughs> but mo most men tend to actually agree yes I'll say most cases of uh, paternity testing, at least as far as I know, Mary Eunice has more data because she's the one who, who deals with this on a daily basis, is that it's actually is negated by the men. A lot of the men will say, no, this is not my child, or will go to court and refuse, mm -hmm. and they will demand to have the test. So mo contrary to most people's expectation, men in our population generally don't refuse. In fact, they usually welcome it. Uh, a lot of the time, the women will also uh, insist on the same test. So, acceptability-wise, people don't really refuse. Once in a while, people refuse because they think maybe they're being uh, slandered and all that. But by and large, most people tend to accept. Of course, there's always anxiety, and that's why we insist on doing what we call cancelling. You know, you have to do cancelling to both the to both mother, man, man because mm -hmm. you know the father at that time and the mother, the just mother. to prepare them for any eventuality. Because sometimes you know women come and they tell us, "I am absolutely Please. certain <laughs> that this is this is his child. I have never slept with any other man." Yeah. We get those kind of so if I remember one, yeah. one last week, mm -hmm. and when you do the actual test, it's I mean, even sometimes different. we even doubt our own results because they, <laughs> because you can see clearly this child looks like so and so. But yes. when you do the test, it proves that it's not. It's and uh, later you find the woman come and says actually coming to think about it maybe i think i was drunk that time and <laughs> <laughs> so this but what is some of the now let's get to the cost before i can even uh, get to my next question eunice how much does it cost to do a dna test um dna testing at our place costs um seventeen thousand four hundred mm -hmm. per person so if you have father and child that is seventeen thousand four hundred times two and um, there are issues there are cases where we need the mother's blood whereby you know it's not uh definite is it the it's somehow inconclusive so that is the time we also need the the mother's blood mm -hmm. and also now the cost goes up all right mm -hmm. and then there are some instances where maybe the person who is supposed to be doing a dna test just is not willing either to give their blood or to give you know and then people have to well we've seen this in the movies mm -hmm. uh, where people have to pull hair off someone's head in their sleep mm -hmm. and someone has to you know get the lashes of someone's eyes you know in their sleep as well mm -hmm. and so many things i don't mm -hmm. know clip the nails yes. and, and carry yes. the nails and, and a toothbrush as well mm -hmm. <laughs> you know carry all sorts of specimen but mm -hmm. then can you enlighten us more on some of those uh, issues in it in an instance, sample, especially where you're doing it secretively okay um in secrecy it doesn't really apply mm -hmm. to our facility because we have um kind of steps that we need to do and the parties involved must be aware for example, when you come to our lab for a paternity testing, you must have your original ID, or if you don't have the Kenyan ID, you should have your passport. And um, we also need the passport of the man and the mother as well. Mm -hmm. And we also require what we call the PAT certificate or PAT notification for the child as well. So if 
these things are there, then we go to the next step whereby we ask for legal consent from the mother because if the child is a minor then we need the mother's legal consent then now the the t taking of the blood sample happens mostly in our lab we are using blood samples but, mm -hmm. also use the but swab. we can also use the the paco swabs actually um some parts in the u.s they send some paco swabs to us to our laboratory when they have somebody like in Kenya, mostly these people who are in the DAP or the the camps, camps. refugee camps. Mm -hmm. So we we use also the the park also. But the point okay. here is that uh, uh, for us particularly, we will not do any test without the knowledge and consent of all the parties involved. Uh, in Kenya, the law is not a hundred percent tight, and like for example in the UK. Uh, we have the Tissues Act and uh, the, 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 we have, of course, the uh, Public Health Act and the rest. Uh, but we will not do any test without the consent or the knowledge of the other party. So mm -hmm. people do come to us and say, look, I want you to test for me without uh, my wife knowing. I just want to be sure that this is my child. If it is my child, I will accept. If it is not my child, I'll discuss with her. We've seen it that... Mm -hmm it will never happen because if they, it happens that it's not the child mm. then hell breaks loose mm -hmm. and then they'll go telling every the whole world that look i tested at lancet and mm -hmm. this is not my child mm -hmm. so we always insist mm. that there must be consent in america it's allowed for you to take blood from the child uh and uh, have or rather the back of swab from the child mm. or take material uh, biological material from the child have it tested to just confirm whether you're the father you can do it in secret but not in kenya in kenya uh, we we know we are part of the lancet group which is originally from South Africa. So South Africa tends to have very strict laws and we tend to follow uh, similar from our parent company in South Africa. We will not do any test without the information or the knowledge of somebody unless it is a court approved process here. Yeah. Mm. Well, uh, you say that it costs 17,400 per head. Before uh, discount. <laughs> <laughs> with a discount before discount oh my goodness mm -hmm. okay before discount and then after you, you know when someone is going in is there any sort of counseling that is is done you know before you go in for this dna test that look the, the results might come out different so this is what you need to know do you do any sort of counseling dr ahmed yes we have to do counseling mm. uh particularly for the women <laughs> Yeah. Because I, I don't know, uh, most of the time the, the men come like, uh, you know, if it's going to happen, you know, I'll accept. I always tell the men uh, a lot of time in my counseling uh, that uh, for you it's a win-win situation. Either you'll be uh, confirmed to be a father, mm -hmm. which means now you're a man who has a mm -hmm. child, uh, you have increased your number uh, of inheritors and whatever. But on the other hand, it can also mean that you don't have, you cannot hold uh, responsibility. But interestingly, some men actually, even after finding his own their ch children, they actually yeah. continue supporting yeah. them. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to know. Mm -hmm. But for the women especially, a lot of the time, um, for lack of better words, some of them are in denial. You know, they don't believe it. And uh, when it, you need to actually cancel them because when it comes out, the results, they can't really believe it. And some people even try to uh, uh, want to commit suicide. So you have to explain to them what it is because they'll tell you, uh, look, I don't trust this result. Then you tell them, look, if the result is saying that this is the, not the father, it is 100%, we are sure. You can take a gun and put it on my head, I am 100% sure that this is not this man's child. If the results say that he's a father, it's 99.999% because mm -hmm. maybe he has a twin whom we didn't know about uh, <laughs> in terms of probability. In very rare cases. Very rare cases. Mm -hmm. But uh, the point here is that when we say it is not the child, we are 100% sure. Of course, there, is, there could be a few issues when it comes to the aspects of uh, sometimes people want to uh, forge things, uh, they want to uh, bring in siyasa uh, kondani, mm -hmm. they want to corrupt situation, mm -hmm. and that's why we always insist on what we call a uh, strict chain of custody. The sample must be collected in the presence of all the parties concerned, mm -hmm. they must witness it, <coughs> it must be sealed, mm -hmm. They must sign it, mm -hmm. and it will only be unsealed at the point of testing in the laboratory. And our results are usually automated in that they file directly onto the computer system. So to corrupt is very rare. There have been instances where people have, uh, we have had a situation in other labs where when we repeat the test, in our lab we find a different result. And when you trace, you find maybe somebody corrupted the results there. So that's the only time of ma that manipulation or people try to forge things mm -hmm. uh, and that's the concern. So when a test is negative, you know, that's for example, not the expected results to the woman, 
then what they need to ask themselves is could it have been uh, manipulated could it have been forged could there have been corruption but otherwise as far as scientifically concerned mm. if the test says you are the father you are the father if it says you're not the father you're not the father and you can take that home someone is asking can a paternity dna be conclusive between man and child without testing the woman yes yes um the father and child it can be conclusive because you see if we find a perfect match between the father and the child then uh most of the time it's 99.99 percent mm. so that is a true proof that this is the child uh, for this man mm. 